Why, hello and welcome to our Thursday Rendezvous. Each week, I'm going to be talking to experts in the renovation, property and design worlds. And I'm going to be asking the questions that you've been dying to ask. These are just short chats with the experts bringing you the 411 in a way that we can all understand. So we're going to break it down for you. Strap in. Here we go. Hey, gang, welcome back to another weekly install. Today, I am joined by Melissa Lenarden, who is interior design extraordinaire. I am absolutely pumped to have you here, Mel. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, and I'm so excited that you've been able to put something like this together for everybody. It's great. Thanks, girl. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. And we should, I should mention we did not text each other about the similar sort of vibe no. top. That's just... <laughs> Just design vibes. Ooh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Now, this is going to be super fun because I want to pick your brains here today and get um, hot tips straight from you around for all those renovators that are watching and thinking about what they want to do to their home but really worried that they're not going to get the beautiful home that they have in their mind without spending an absolute fortune to get yep. it. So yep. I really want to get your um, guidance uh, around what people should think about when they're uh, looking at designing their home without mm -hmm. breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. And then I want to go on a bit of a virtual home tour with you and have a bit of fun as we walk through just the general rooms or zones of a home and get your hot tips around what people should think about when they're planning those spaces and particularly, you know, where to splurge and where to save the money. So, yep. Sounds so great. let's get right into it and just get your kind of off the bat key thoughts around designing a beautiful home. Sure. So I think um, before any sort of, you know, hammers get thrown into walls or anything like that, it's um, really important to understand your budget um, and, and how much you can actually afford. Um, the second thing would be is to really understand what it is that you want from your home. How do you and your family um, use your home currently and spend money in those areas that are really important to you, whether, you know, you love cooking and that is something that you love to, you know, entertain, you know, focus on those areas. Um, if you love, you know, work from home, for example, and you need a great setup with lots of storage, you know, make that an important thing. Um, I find lots of people get really caught up in the trends or what you're seeing online, um, on the blog, on Pinterest. But that doesn't necessarily work for, for you uh, as, as your own homeowner. Um, it may look great, but it's not going to be functional and you're going to be wasting money um, in those areas that, you know, you think they look, you know, really beautiful and you think that's important, but really it's not going to serve you and your family in the long run. So I think getting really clear about what it is that you need from your home and how you want to feel as well when you walk inside our homes. Um, this year has been so important in the fact that home has been a safe haven for us. And I think we need to continue on with that and really hone in on um, what makes us feel safe and cozy at home um, and how we want to feel, you know, whether it's a relaxed yeah. sense, whether we want to feel joyous and happy. Um, you know, those are the things that is really, really important before you know, we even start looking online or start shopping or, you know, start demoing walls. Mm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the first thing. And I've even put that in my um, copy on my website. It's just before you start getting into Pinterest and going down that rabbit hole, just getting really clear around, you know, that's where you can go for the inspo once you know what you're yeah. wanting to achieve. So, yeah. you know, people can get so overwhelmed by what they're seeing and feeling like that's unachievable, but that might not be necessarily, as you say, what you want or what you need. So yeah, really yeah. understanding the, the, the feeling um, and the, yeah, the purpose of, of certain spaces is, is absolutely key. Yeah, Great sure. advice straight off the bat there. All right, let's go on a tour, girl. Let's wander yeah. around the house and awesome. start let's with, go. so they say kitchen sell houses. So mm -hmm. how do you create a beautiful kitchen without breaking the bank? Sure. So I would really um, understand on how you want to use the space. I think an area to really splurge, I guess, is getting that layout right. Making sure you have enough storage, you have enough bench space. Yeah. Some people I know, you know, if they want that Carrara marble bench top, um, it can be quite expensive, but they will shorten their bench tops. They'll shorten their cabinetry 
just to make sure that they buy that one slab. That's a great way to stretch the dollar, but really, are you gonna get more benefit out of a beautiful Carrara bench top or you know, lacking in storage down the track? Yeah, so it's just yeah. being really, really smart about that and getting that layout right, having enough bench space, um, and then also splurging on things like um, quality cabinetry, so all your joinery, making sure um, it's gonna stand the test of time. Um, you know, a few people do say, you know, later on you can change the door fronts, but that can be quite tricky. And some cabinet makers actually don't like uh, replacing doors on carcasses that they haven't made. Um, so, you know, make sure you spend that money um, in the first place in those areas. And then if you needed to save anywhere, if you're not an amazing cook or don't love to cook, don't spend all that money on amazing appliances mm -hmm. um, that are so whiz bang. You're actually not going to use all those functions. Yeah, um, yeah. And appliances take a really big chunk of the kitchen budget. So yeah. if you're, you know, just the average person who likes to cook, does it because they have to, like myself? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe, you know, smeg and mele are um, a, a really not a great way to spend your money. Um, you know, there are some great affordable options out there that still do the same thing, still look beautiful. Um, and that's where you can definitely save as well. Oh, yeah. amazing advice. Now, how are you feeling about um, butler's pantries? People, I chat to people a lot about their dream to have mm -hmm. a butler's pantry or a walk-in yeah. pantry. Um, what are you seeing in, in that space or any advice from anyone wanting to build one into their design? Yeah, I don't think it's absolutely necessary, um, especially if you don't have the space or the budget to really um, extend and make sure you have, it's essentially a, a second kitchen people are using it as. But, you know, that just goes back to the 70s and 80s. You know, I rem remember my grandparents, like, not touching the kitchen. It's everything, let's just cook in the garage because we don't want to mess up the inside kitchen. And that's a shame because, we, like I say, we spend all this money on beautiful cabinetry and bench tops. Why not show it off? Um, I think it's important to have an area with additional storage, like a walk-in pantry, yeah. And sometimes things like a second dishwasher is really handy if you entertain a lot or have a few kids and you just want to pop everything in the dishwasher and walk away. Yeah. Um, but I don't think you need to go down the track of creating a butler's pantry that is essentially a second kitchen. Um, I think it's, it's sometimes it can be a waste of money and a waste of space if you're needing it elsewhere, maybe for another bedroom or another yeah. living area. Yeah, yeah. Or a little powder room or something just, yeah, close yeah. to that entertaining area. Yeah, yeah, I see that quite a lot going through homes that, in my view, they, they've compromised elsewhere with, with yeah. putting that dream into their kitchen and really could be achieved with some hidden cabinetry, you know, some yeah. deep cabinets that you can put some of your behind, appliances behind and they're yes. hidden away, but it's not necessarily that separate space. So yeah. I think your you point around the storage just being such a key consideration yeah. across the board, but especially in, in somewhere like the kitchen is really great advice. Yeah. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. All right, let's cruise to the bathroom. Sure. So splurging, I think, um, in one area is making sure um, you tile all the walls. I think it's a bit of a letdown when people spend all this money on amazing floor tiles and so maybe it's a real terrazzo or real marble or something they've just got to have it but they'll only do it in the necessary areas like um, around your, your basin your shower and your bath they're like the, the areas that you have to have wall tiles yep but it's such a letdown when the rest of the walls is um, painted plaster I think you know um, save a little bit on on the tiles but do the wall tiles everywhere now you don't have to go you know full height up to the corners for example um, if you've got really tall ceilings follow the the, um, the most tallest part in the room so for example like behind me you know follow the um, the window height and carry that along yeah. um, I think yeah and, and I find like some practical things, if, if you've got a towel rail on a plaster wall, you actually see like the watermarks drip down when you're, when you're drying your hands or you're putting a wet towel on. And it's just those things down the track that you wish I spent that, I don't know, a thousand or so more to tile all the walls. And it just looks complete and it looks finished. Yeah. Finished. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Mm, what do you think? Oh, completely agree. Yes. But, um, 
uh, watching the block, the last season of the block, it drove me crazy seeing these different angles as well. Yeah. I think from that finished, you know, really cohesive perspective, being able to just go to that same height and follow that through, yeah. um, it just looks better aesthetically. It's just, yeah, agree Absolutely. completely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think to save uh, would probably be on tapware. Now, I'm not saying go get cheap inferior quality tapware because that just does not pay off. Yeah. It's going to be quality tapware, but it doesn't have to be the most amazing brands. Um, you know, Chrome still looks great because I know coloured tapware does cost a little bit more. Yeah. So um, if you want to get good quality tapware, but Chrome sits in your budget, that's fine. Chrome is timeless. It's not going anywhere. If you did want a coloured version like um, gunmetal or even a, um, a brush nickel, they're very timeless as well. It doesn't cost a lot as like brass or anything, for example. But um, yeah, spend the money on quality, good name um, brands, but you don't have to go for super duper, like appliances. You don't have to go, have to, go to top of the range. Yes, yeah. yes, love that. And from a design perspective, while we're in the bathroom, something that also throws me and I talk to people about is just think about when you're using the toilet or the shower, you know, in terms of your design yeah. as well. How many places do you see where the toilet roll holders just out of reach or the, yeah, yeah to, to the point about seeing water streaks going down the wall where the hand yeah. towel is actually positioned. So yes. just little things like that, just step into a space and just think about how you're actually using it. Yeah. And it will make living in your home so much easier rather than you having to think, Oh yeah, I've got to grab my my towel before I jump in the shower. Like yes. adding those little rope hooks right near the shower. It just makes life simple. Life's yes. complicated yes. enough. We don't need to worry about those little things in the morning when we're getting ready. Absolutely. Could agree more. All right. While we're in a little bit of a wet area, the laundry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Laundry, I think, same as the kitchen. Make sure you've got plenty of, of storage. Um, and, you know, as a stock stand, you can do that steel trough and cabinet. Yeah. Spend that little bit more and get a trough built into the bench top. Um, and probably do stone there. I find people leave out the laundry as, oh, we never really use that space. We'll just do laminate bench tops, whatever. But the reason why we don't want to spend a lot of time in there is because they're ugly and we, we actually don't like, well, personally, I don't like doing the washing. Um, so making sure it still looks good and it connects to one of the other wet areas, whether it's the bathrooms or the kitchen, just having that cohesion um, is, is important, I think, and making sure you've got enough room for your broom um, mop, all those tall um, items. Um, people love to put shelving, but make sure it's adjustable shelving with yeah, an area for those um, yeah, brooms and mops and vacuums. So Yeah, great tip. Yeah. One of my favourite features I see, and my mum has one of these in her laundry, is those fold-away um, ironing boards where you just open the door and they flop down. So you're yes. actually, they're half the size. But those and, and pull out, um, you know, clothes area or dry it. Um, Guys, yeah. Units. I think things like that, that you can just build into small spaces as well. I like to see when I'm going through homes. So, yeah, it's been clever about small spaces. If you have a small space, people think, oh, it's tiny. Just, you know, do a bench top and whatever. But I think you can get really clever and creative in those smaller spaces and use all of that space that you've got. And with those fittings, like you just suggested is, is brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. All right, the living room. Mm -hmm. um, I would say uh, probably built-in cabinetry. Sometimes this can push people's budgets and one area to rule out when you're looking at your building contract, for example, is joinery because you can do that later on. Yeah. Um, but if, if the budget allows for it having some built-in joinery um you know for your tv or your fireplace area i think it looks um custom it looks bespoke um, it looks like it's always been there rather than yeah. um, yeah. filling it up with furniture because it might cost you a little bit now to do that cabinetry but you still got to buy an entertainment unit you still got to buy furniture to try and fill that space but yeah. people don't realize you actually don't have to buy as much furniture when it's actually built in so it yeah. works out in the wash, I guess. Um, and one I love thing that. We've like actually just, sorry to, to interrupt you there. This is perfect timing. It's almost like I knew we were going to cover this in specific um, 
concept, but we in the last episode, um, I talked to Dan from Westwood about joinery and just getting understanding when to do that in the yeah. design um, process. And I am in agreement, but it can be one of those things you can get in there and it's great to be able to feel the space and see actually, do you know what? Floor to ceiling, either side of a fireplace, custom yeah. joinery is going to look gorgeous and is actually going to end up being that feature in that, yeah. in that zone. So yeah, absolutely. It's the, the it's the area that you're going to see the most um, and you're going to get bonus storage out of it. So um, why not? Mm. Perfect. Um, and one thing as well, I notice uh, when I visit lots of clients is the husbands just have to have the largest TV possible. <laughs> and yeah. That, you know, save that money, you know, on, on that, such a big TV and, and, and put it into the, the joinery. I think that's where you can grab a little bit of that money um, because you, the, the TV is not the feature. It's, it's ugly. It's, you know, the, the family or the living room is all about conversation and, and spending time with family. So honing on that um, rather than get the biggest TV possible. Sometimes it actually, it's got to be to scale as well. You don't want to be sitting too close to your TV. Yes. Um, <laughs> it can be um, a bit annoying. Um, but, you know, if, if there are ways to hide the TV, you know, whether it's in custom joinery, you know, beautiful sliding doors. Samsung mm -hmm. have those artwork TVs, which are brilliant. Even painting the wall darker behind yeah. the TV so it just blends in. Um, you can get quite creative there. I not make it the centre of attention. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I mean, you don't see as many in the bedroom now, which is great. Yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> is that, yeah. Or if they are, they're those picture frame style yeah. um, TVs. But I agree that, yeah, if, looking at the orientation to not necessarily have that as the centre of feature in that yeah. space is really great advice. Yeah. Cool. Fabulous. All right, mm -hmm. ready to move on? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do the master bedroom. Sure. So I think in terms of um, the bedroom, having enough, um, you know, walk-in sort of wardrobe space, I guess, and really thinking about the types of clothes you do have and fit out your wardrobe, that will help that. So, you know, whether you wear lots of dresses or long coats, having a section for long hanging, um, section for double hanging rails. So you've got top and bottoms and skirts underneath, really maximising the amount of, space that you've got um you can't go past drawers i think you know things that can't be hung like socks jocks bras all those sorts of things they need a spot as well um, and drawers are really handy for that um and you know if if the budget doesn't stretch you know white melamine internals are fine you don't have to pay and do you know timber um you know um, joinery and things like that Having white inside is totally fine. Uh, if your wardrobe is in your bedroom, for example, like you don't have a walk-in robe, you know, some lovely doors over the top of those. Otherwise, if it's a walk-in robe and you need to save some money, leave that open. You don't have to have it for uh, like cabinet doors on, on all those areas too. So. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. even things like carpet, um, that's probably one area that you could save because carpet is easier to replace over time, especially if you've got young kids or pets and you don't want to be worrying about them trashing it. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't have to go for that real high-end, high-quality carpet, even though some of them are still quite easy to keep clean, like natural fibres are a bit like wool are quite easy to keep clean. But going something with a blend or even um, pile um, solution side nylon, really easy to keep clean. They're pretty much stain resistant. Um, but if you needed to um, save some money, you can do something a little bit cheaper, but, you know, invest in the, um, a good underlay so you get that cushiony softness, um, which is also great for insulation too. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Thanks, Mel. That's, that's a lot of advice in that one little space or big space, depending on how large your house is getting to be. Um, before we go to the last area, which is the probably the most used one in 2020, I just while you were talking about carpet, what's your view around floorboards? And yeah. um, I get asked this quite a bit as well. I've got a personal preference, but it'd be great to get your view on this as well in terms of whether it's critical to um, or um, from a resale value, it could be a very different perspective, but the solid hardwood timber floors versus some of the solutions that have come on a huge amount in recent yep. years, the vinyls. Mm -hmm. um, what, 
well, how do you feel about different types of wood effect flooring? Yeah. Sure, that's actually one of my notes I wanted to um, okay. point out, so that's great. So there's the difference between solid timber flooring and engineered. It all depends on your renovation as well and what your builder suggests because your subfloor uh, will, will make a big impact on the type of flooring you need to use. Um, I would spend the money on either solid timber or engineered, but get that um, get the timber species right. You can save money on um, not having as wide a boards as possible. Yeah, you know you can do a little bit skinnier if it meant spending money on you know um, spotted gum or oak timber flooring that you absolutely love because the price does jump when you go go for a wider board, mm -hmm. and also the grade of timber as well. So. Um, the lesser grades are the ones that got lots of knots um, and character, which I love, but some people don't like that as much. They want something that's a bit more cleaner. Yes. So you have to go up in grade, which means you're literally selecting the boards that you want. Um, if you need to save money, that's where I'd put. I would forego um, that and then have you know, some knots and character. Um, in terms of you know my point of view like I think you can't go past solid or engineered engineered is still timber it's just you know it's in layer of it um, you can still sand it back just like solid timber in its lifetime it's purely the the subfloor um, I've been using it a little bit of the hybrid timber flooring um, for areas where clients want to continue into bathrooms and laundries and that works really well I think that's good for as a cost saving point of view I will probably see what else is going on in the rest of your area as well, like as a suburb. I'm not all about resale value. Like I, I feel, um, and I try and educate my clients around designing a home for you. Don't worry about the people that may buy a house in 10 years time. But, um, you know, you, I don't think you want to let down your house if you're in a certain area and you've got laminate or um, vinyl flooring. That's yeah, my yeah. personal view, I think, on that. But, you know, I've got a client at the moment whose um, kids, like, they love playing with water, like, and they're just obsessed with it. And, and we're just going to do hybrid. You know, that's going to make their life easier. They don't care. Um, and, and real timber is, is not going to suit their lifestyle. So, like you, I think it is a personal preference, but I think uh, definitely continue with that solid timber or engineered timber. There's a different sound to it, that echoiness. Um that you get like with laminate and, and um, vinyl but in saying that like technology these days is brilliant and it looks so realistic oh doesn't it yeah um so realistic the the um manufacturer like the laminate and vinyl we've got that at our house at the moment and we've got a dog inside and we didn't want to worry about it scratching um the floors so it works well for us and and yeah. we're happy with that um you know, and you've got to make sure as well, I don't like seeing the quad around the architraves. So if you right. do that, you've got to make sure that your timber flooring goes in first and then your architrave sits on top of that. Yes, absolutely. Um, Give that clean finish. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you can, okay, if you have to have vinyl or timber or, or, um, or laminate, you know, make sure you can avoid the quad if you need to, because that looks a little bit better. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's thank you for reinforcing my advice because I do get asked that because I sit in this weird space of where I'm talking to people about buying and selling homes, but also about creating homes. So it is always going to be that you've got to stick to your guns and say, what do I want to live with? How long am I intending yeah. to be here for? So how do I want to enjoy this space and not necessarily get too concerned about that future buyer down the track? That said, you know, there are some areas and, and you've touched on a few of those around where you might not want to fix yourself into some of those more permanent, potentially polarising sort of yes. decisions like we saw on shows like The Block where mm -hmm. it, it can be quite divisive. So there are areas where it's, it's, it's important to have consideration to a future buyer um, to a certain extent, but to start with a, how do I want to live in this home between yeah. now and that point? It's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Cool. All right. And let's finish in the zone that you're in now, which no <laughs> doubt you spent a bit of time. I actually love it a oh, lot yeah. um, and wouldn't mind moving in there when you go into a co-working space. <laughs> yeah, Just let me know sure. when it's available. But <laughs> the home office slash study, what are the key mm -hmm. things to think about in that space? 
Um, really understand how many people are going to be working. I think in the, in the home office, you know, we've said this year, everything's changed. So more people are still going to continue working from home. Uh, for, for me, it's just myself that's in here. My husband's temporarily in the dining room and that's, that's a, a temporary thing, right? There's no yeah. point us um, fitting out lots of joinery if it's just going to be me. Yeah. Uh, but it's all about, yeah, hiding the things that I hate packing things away. And, you know, I've always got samples and things with me. So it needs to be easy to store. So have lots of joinery um, and shelving, like open shelving looks great, but is it going to be practical for you? Um, if you find that you've got paperwork everywhere, if you've got printers and things, it's probably better to have it behind closed doors. Um, and, you know, ultimately look at the home office as a um, multifunctional space. You know, will you need space for extra guests? And so maybe a, um, a sofa bed might be handy in there. Uh, maybe it's like a secondary living area. Um, I use this as um, like another living area when, I don't know, my husband's watching the footy or something and I don't want to go to, to my bedroom. You know, at least I can come here and chill out um, and you know, it doesn't feel like my office. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it feels like a secondary lounge if we need it to be. So I think get, um, you're yeah, really clear on how you want to use it um, because uh, bedrooms, you know, it's pretty much a, another bedroom, um, the, the home office. So how can we make use of it rather than foregoing um, an actual another bedroom, I guess? Oh. Great advice. And think about your PowerPoints and your light oh, yeah. switches as well, hey? Like that's Absolutely. Nothing drives me more crazy than when I look at it and I go, Where, why did someone not think that there was going to need to yes. be a laptop yes. <laughs> plugged in here? So, yeah. You can never have enough. And, you know, have them at table height as well, yeah. um, you know, rather than, than underneath. So you can never have an, um, too many PowerPoints. Same with the bathrooms and the kitchen. Um, you know, you can be really smart around where they go. Um, if you do lots of, I know, sorry, we've covered the kitchen. But, um, you know, if you love to cook and you've got lots of small appliances, having some extra PowerPoints on the island bench or the, you know, the pop-up PowerPoints, they're really handy too, so. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And similarly in the bedroom, of course, with the bedside table positioning and where you yep. want the light switches to be and, We've seen a lot of those USB um, plugins now as yeah. well. So, yeah, yep. yeah. Thinking Absolutely. about power sources and lighting sources is really key. So, mm. and you don't have to um, upgrade them. Sorry, you don't have to ha um, upgrade them everywhere because that can be quite expensive. You know, there are some beautiful flush um, looking PowerPoints or light switches, and, and just have them on the areas that you can see. And the ones behind, you know, underneath tables or beds and things can just be the standard. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's where you can splurge and, and save, I guess. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. This has been so much fun. I've loved Yay. our home tour. Thank you yeah. so much, Mel. Thank you. That was really good. I hope that, um, you know, a few people can gain some little tips from there. So no yeah. doubt, no <laughs> doubt at all. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you. We'll catch all you later. Right. See you chick. Bye. Yeah. Bye.